So the next quiz is, is going to be very similar to our previous quiz. So this is for quiz 5. And quiz 5 is on uh, rules of inference, but now for quantified statements. So let's just let write this up, quantified statements. And it's, I, I, you might say, why are you spending some time on this? Because I think it's interesting. It's an application of logic, of this very abstract theory, perhaps, for with all these formal symbols and so, to um, to daily reasoning. Okay, well, granted, these particular examples are a little bit, well, not life-saving uh, conclusion that we, we, we make here, but still, it, it's, it's a way to deduce um, truth carefully and correctly uh, from given statements. And trust me, many, most people will not be able to do this or are or, or going to use this wrong and make wrong statements and not make wrong conclusions from these kind of things. Okay, so the, it's very similar as to what we did in quiz 4, but it's quantified statements. So uh, that means here we're going to have a variable x. Here in this case, there are pets of Alice. It's again Alice with her pets. But this time it's not this particular pet. In the previous, what's the difference? In the previous... Uh, quiz we had a or review we had a given uh, pet quarky and we made statements about quarky uh, although we sometimes or in the quiz itself we made some vaguer statements say if you are living on this thing then such and so okay uh, but here we have really variables and so this means that instead of propositions we're going to get predicates so let's write this out with predicates and let's see what we need. Well, brown, we need a predicate for brown. So bx is x is brown. Uh, what else? Furry. fx is x is furry. As a fur. Uh, hair. Uh, this is also furry, non brown pets are old. O of x. x is old. If you want to rather think about young, you could make a predicate for young instead, it has no legs. Again, as I like said, I prefer to write positive things. You can debate about old or young, but oh, not is a leg, has a leg, has legs. Okay, let's call that L of X. And uh, I think that's all thing, uh, yes. Furry we talked about and young is a negation of old, yes. So, okay. So let's write down, um, that's the step one, is to choose these things. If necessary, you might give this to you. Step two uh, is now to write down each of these statements formally in quant as a quantified statement. And you'll see these are all quantified statements. I'm not saying that all these statements need necessarily be quantified uh, statements, but here they are. So all, and that's here clear that we are doing, talking about something universal, her brown pets are furry. Now, this is something that you hopefully by now get used to, is that although English seems to not put uh, an implication and even kind of the direction in which what is the furry one's brown or the brown one's furry, English can be a little bit vague like that. Eh? The browns are furry. The browns are furry. Brown are furry. F brown, brown are furry. It, it, stress could somehow slightly it mean, it change the meaning. Although I think it's all clear here what it means is that if, it's a, if you're dealing with a brown pet, then it's furry. And if you say it then, you see it this way, you say it then. So it is an implication. And it's universal, we said that, for all x. If you're brown, then you're furry. Okay? So sometimes you have to rephrase your statement slightly to, to uh, reveal its true nature, so to speak. Not all our pets are furry. Now, there's only one statement here, so it cannot be definitely not an implication. It's, it, it only involves the predicate px. But it's an, so it says... It's not all, so it's negation of um, of, uh, ex of, a quant of a universal statement, so let's write it this way. Okay, I'm just uh, copying what the English word says. You could say, okay, it means also something else, but just let's formally rewrite it. Okay, the third statement says, any of our brown pets is either old or has no legs. Now, I pointed this out to you already, that um, <clears throat> where if you say all, it's clear we don't buy universal, but English also allows to do this in different ways, for instance, any or every. So we again are dealing with a universal statement, and again this uh, the verb to be here that is um, use it's 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 actually um, a predicative predicative verb, 
means that we actually really make an implication here. So again, is for all x, if you're not furry, then you are, wait. Oh, sorry, I, I'm jumping, I'm, I'm wrong, I'm the wrong one, I'm sorry. I was working on three and then for some reason I went to four. Okay, let's, sorry. So, uh, three, if you're uh, not brown, so for all x, it, again, any, right, so it makes it for all. Uh, if you're not brown, then you're either old, so ox, or you have no legs, not lx. Again, the either or seems to mean um, exclusive or, but I don't think anybody really means that when he says this. He's just pointing out, well, it's an either old thing or it has no legs, or it is old and has no legs. Right? So it's, it's really inclusive or here. In cases where it's not clear, 100% clear, we should always interpret or as a disjunction, as the logical or. And then finally, the fourth statement says, all non furry pets are young. Again, it's a universal statement, and I hope by now you see it's an implication. If you're not furry, then you are young, but that means you're not old. Good. So, now, step three, it is, of course, in some sense, the most important one, is what is it that we want to do? Well, we want to prove she has a pet without legs. So let's write it down. There is an X, not LX. That is what we want to show. So let's put this in a little, let's box this, let's color this that we keep in mind. That This is where we're going. And how we're going there. So what you then do is typically, of course, looking for which of these statements says something that I want to know. Well, the only statement that talks about Lex is actually the third statement, so I have to use this statement somehow, okay? Um, not of Lx, which is just the thing I want, or at least, well, I, I'm kind of ignoring a bit the quantifier for the moment, so it, 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 formally it looks the same, right? So that's what I want, it's in hypothesis, so I want to have the, the conclusion, ah, sorry, it's in the conclusion, so I want to have the hypothesis, okay? Now, this hypothesis only B only occurs in the first sentence, although there, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's also a hypothesis. Okay? But I want not B, and that's a good, good thing, because to get not B from a hypothesis, if, if, if B is a hypothesis and F is a conclusion, and if I can negate, show that the conclusion is false, then I know the hypothesis must be false, which is what I want. So I'm looking for actually Everbeck's or rather negation of that. Now, what about this one here? This is a little bit annoying. And so even before I go on, I might say, wait a sec, I don't know what two means properly. I have pointed this out that when you take a negation of a formal statement, it, with, with, which still has uh, sub-predicates and propositions inside of it and quantifiers inside of this negation, then uh, it's very hard to, to grasp what it is, what is going on. So before we go on, perhaps let's rewrite find something that is logically equivalent where not is completely applied to all the predicates. And this is very simple. We are doing here the Morgan law for quantifi quantifiers. And remember, it means it, you flip the quantifier and then you negate the predicate. So this is the Morgan law for quantifiers. But if you say the Morgan, that is more enough. Okay. Ah, so, okay, because remember, I was trying to say something about I want to negate this. And this is exactly what this does. Oh, this, that is good news. So let's use that. Now, so I'm thinking of using two, okay, but now I'm getting a bit stuck. What I'm going to do with this, there is an x, not, of x, not f of x. What do you do now with these quantifiers? And this is the new part, so to speak. That is because we have uh, techniques which we call um, instantiation and generalization. So when you have a quantified statement, you can take an instance of this quantified statement Let's start with this, and we'll talk about generalization in a sec when we need it. So, um, in this particular case, what we're referring to is that, um, sorry, so this is called existential instantiation. So I'm going to write just instant because I'm going to otherwise misspell this. And what does this mean is now you can bring in a name for a witness to this fact. There is an X, so that means that one of these pets has this property. Now, we have to, we don't know which pet it is. They have, she told us, but we cannot see the pets. So we say that pet without legs, call that A. So A is a pet that satisfies this, uh, witnesses this 
existential statement. And so this existential instantiation gives me not f of a, so where a is a, well, a is a pet. Okay, so a stands for a particular pet here. But which one? We don't know. We don't know what it is. It could be the quarky from last time, but it could be another guy, right? So, not f a. Good, but now I'm, I have what I wanted. I wanted not f because I was thinking of using this here modus tollens, right? Um, on this guy. Uh, sure, but what about this quantifi quantifier? Well, we have, as we have existential quantification, we have universal quantification. What is the difference? In existential quantifier, you can say there is some a, and that's the only thing you can say. There's A. It could be just one, it could be many, but the only thing you guarantee is that there's one. What is the universal says? That's a totally different thing. It guarantees that no matter which one you name, he does satisfy this, this statement. So that's good news, because we, so we're going to do a universal instantiation. So we can take for x whatever we want, and we're going to take x equal to A. And so what we get is B A implies f of a. And now we're in good shape. Now we are back to our previous quiz because we have this. We already had this, remember? This came from here. And so what can we do? I hope you see it. It is modus tollens, right? The, we have an implication, but the, we know that the conclusion is false, so the hypothesis must be false, not b a. Okay, so uh, not b a, and then we had said in our, uh, I don't know anymore what we had said, but yeah, yeah, that's what we said. We said we're going to use this here. Now this one, we can we can conclude that. Again, we have a quantifier, but we now have already done this once, so we can do this again. We do universal instantiation on. Let me write. Let me copy the, the particular statement here. So for all x, not b x, o x, or not l x. So now, if we universal instantiation, we can take x any value we want and and so we could very well take x to be some pet b that we another pet but why would we we don't know anything about this pet b at least about this pet a we knew something so we're going to do again x equals a and this gives me not b a then o a or not l a now this gets in much closer where we want arisen x not l x Right? This is what we want, and I'm showing here that this A has no legs. Well, am I showing that? I'm showing that this A is, well, it could be old, or it could have no legs. So I kind of want to rule out that it's not old. Okay, so let's see. What else do I have? Have I used everything? No, actually, if you think about it, so this was 3, right? So I used 3 here. The only statement I have not used... Um, I, yes, this was two, and where did I use one? Oh, yeah, here I used one, sorry. I did universal instantiation on one. I didn't copy one here. So I, I didn't use this guy yet. Let's do universal instantiation, one more time, on uh, for all x, not f of x, then not o of x. And we don't really have to know what this f and o mean, okay? It's just formal. Formally, we say we can do this. We, and of course, we take again A or A, right? Not F of A, then not O of A. Okay. That's uh, what we have. Do we know what we know? Ah, we know actually. We have some truths. So sometimes you have to go back to truths that you discovered uh, early on. Sorry, here we discovered it. And we also have this truth, but I'm not going to use this now. Uh, but I have this one, so let me, <coughs> sorry, I don't want to confuse you, so let me circle the right one again. I'm going to use this fact. And I, I just do good old-fashioned uh, modus, uh, modus ponens. I have an implication, and the hypothesis is true, so the conclusion must be true. Not OA. <coughs> So now what we have here, we have, we know that uh, oh yeah, I've, I've, sorry, I, I forgot to use something, right? Because I was doing this, I am uh, sorry, I forgot a step. 
I mean, I said it, but I didn't write it out. Remember, what I was trying to do was, with this universal instantiation was because I wanted to use the fact that I don't have not BA. I'm sorry. So there's another modus ponens here. So let me make sure that I write this. Um, uh, no, wait, this doesn't work. Mm. I had to do it correct from the beginning. Okay, so... Um, I apologize. So what we need to do here is we we're gonna use this fact that we had just derived here, and we're gonna do again modus ponens to conclude that O A or not L A. I said this, but I didn't write it up. I'm sorry about that. So uh, this is where we at. We know that this particular pet is either old or has no legs, or perhaps both. But we want to rule out that this is old, because then we know that it has to be this, okay? And we just did that. We say, oh, but it is not old. It, a is the same A as here, right? That's the whole point, that we're talking always about the same A. We always instantiated the same value for X. That's why we, we wanted to do that. So, um, all right, so this is good news. That means that I have now excluded this thing. So we, you might ask, okay, what is the exact um, rule that allows me to do this? Um, yeah, uh, we have seen this. It's called disjunctive syllogism. So I, I'll, I'll write me down, sorry, I'll write down the particular uh, format for that. It's from the table here. Uh, the particular format is that if you have um, P or Q and you know that one of the disjuncts is actually not true, then you know that the other one, oh, the other one must be true, sorry, true, not, not, then Q, okay? This is called disjunctive syllogism. Disjunctive syllogism. We had hypothetical syllogism, this disjunctive, disjunctive syllogism. And this is exactly what, so we say there are two possibilities, and here say, well, the first possibility is not possible, so let me write this up here, so I'll write it here, uh, o, A, and not L, A, but we know that O, A is not true, so by disjunctive syllogism, this guy, I can conclude not L, A. Are we done? Hmm. Hmm. I wanted this statement. I wanted a, 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 a quantified statement, and here I have a predicate about some A. And this is where generalization comes in. Right? And so generalization says that if you prove this, and if you prove this for this particular A, then you can conclude at least there is one X. So this is called existential uh, ge generalization. Um, that, well, there is an X, not LX. Why? Because, so this is what we finally conclude. Why is this? Because, well, there is an X, namely A, right? So we can conclude this. There's also something called existential, uh, sorry, universal generalization, but that is much harder to achieve. There, you cannot do it for a particular A. Remember, here our A was a pet. We, we don't know which was, we know there was only, there was one such pet. How many, we didn't even know. Which, what is his name? We didn't know. There was a pet. If you want to do existen uh, universal generalization, you cannot just take this particular pet, but you have to prove it for any pet. So that's much harder to prove, but that's not the question here. Okay, so that's uh, the preparation for the quiz.